If you looked the wrong way at the boss, you would find it like that. Uh, I saw a waitress walk in, she took a bite of a croissant, fire on, on the spot. This is the first time I've been to this place and it's really cool, it's really beautiful and uh, I'm looking forward for tonight, first time I to check my sound. I like their intentions of this place, they really want their guests to feel comfortable and relaxed. Still a bit classy though. It's a bit dressed up, but it's not dressed up in a stiff way, it's, it's very relaxed. The service is excellent, but also it's like being serviced by a family member or something. And that, is, that also affects my piano entertainment thing. They want me to connect with the guests, have requests, but they don't want this party uh, jumping, uh, feeling and they don't want any background music either they want me to entertain but in a classy comfortable relaxed way Here they have actually built a small apartment for us entertainers to live in while we are working here. Looks like this. Just a small apartment like this with a small kitchen so I can make my own coffee. Uh, a shower and a small bedroom. All that I need. A little bit of an unexpected problem I had yesterday was the microphone stand. It worked against me. That's not great, is it? I have to fix that. This is Elliot, he's the bartender at this place. Hello. You've been working at a, at a lot of places. Yes. Uh, and also English speaking places. A bit, uh, I did work in uh, Australia. Uh, it was my first experience with restaurants. Uh, I, uh, I took a one way ticket, landed there with 4,000 crowns, roughly 400 euros, uh, which doesn't cover the plane ticket home. So I had to get a job or I was homeless. Uh, so I started working as a dishwasher. Uh, which was uh, really fun, but uh, they didn't really have the collective I don't know what the word is in English, but uh, if you looked the wrong way at the boss, you would find it like that. Uh, I saw a waitress walk in, she took a bite of a croissant, fire on, on the spot. Uh, so, so, you know, every time I walked through the kitchen, it was like, fucking don't look at him, don't make eye contact. It was like the, you know, the scene in Jurassic Park. When the T-Rex walks by, you gotta stay still, you don't wanna look at him, you don't wanna aggravate because then you're fucking dumb. Uh, so we're there for a bit. Um, actually, when I got my first paycheck, I had uh, 0 0.014 uh, crowns in my Swedish account and uh, 0 0.4 dollars. So for one week, I was completely out of money. It was the, probably the first time uh, that I uh, experienced what it was like to not even afford food. So I didn't even have food at home, so I had to steal sandwiches from our breakfast at work just to be able to eat something before I got paid. Uh, but luckily you get paid by week in Australia, so I had to live on stolen sandwiches for a week. Uh, and then uh, after that week was done, I got my money and I went to a burger joint in uh, Bondi. 
<laughs> wow, <laughs> cool. But now you, <laughs> wow. Now, but now you're working like seasons in Sweden. Uh, yeah. Uh, for a couple of years or something. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm a season worker, so uh, I've been working uh, I, during the summers. So I work at the, the west coast, uh, I, um, where when I, f I follow tourists is what I do. So the, the tourists go to the west coast in the summer. I follow them. I work in Bar there and during the winter. Come up to the ski resorts, work here where the tourists are, where there's a lot of people. And a good thing about that is I switch restaurant about two, three times a year, so I get a lot of experience with different restaurants. Which is a so say, say that I've worked in restaurants for about four years. I've worked at probably 12 or 13 different restaurants during that time. Cool. And uh, this place, uh, more like a fancy, relaxed place, sort of? I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a bit more laid back. Um, but still, you need, still, it's fancy mm -hmm. in, in the way that you make your drinks and. Yeah, it's, it's like it's fancy in the way that we make your drinks. It's uh, like proper worked cocktails. But the whole uh, vibe of the place is a bit more laid back, so you don't get this, this party crowd. You get more. You know, someone who wants to sit down, have a cocktail, take a breath, uh, which is amazing as a bartender because I hate nightclub services when you gotta lean forward and they're screaming in your ear and you're spitting on your face and oh fuck yeah, gin and tonic, whatever. It's just suicide. How do you like the piano bar? Uh, I, I really like it actually. Uh, I've only worked here two days now, but uh, like the whole vibe of the place is really nice and we have. Yours truly, the Mr. Piano Man over there in the corner playing something and just having a good time with the audience and then you're sending out cocktails and it's just like really, really chill and uh, like it's a, it's, a, it's a chill vibe of the entire place and I mean, it's just, um, but it's, it's nice, it's laid back. It, it creates an atmosphere that yeah, you it's like. Yeah, really decadent atmosphere but not that's like, yeah. Uh, pretentious as, uh, as you, you'd expect. It's a bit more uh, hi, how are you, rather than, you know, your husband on your back, you know, how are you, sir? It's just more of like... Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, this happens also sometimes. No people here and I'm about to start. What should you do then? Well, normally the employers, employers, they want you to play anyway if there are guests coming up, so there's something happening. So I will pay, play, I think, some short sets. Maybe I'll try songs that I rarely play. Just so something happens.